Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we took a look, or a closer look anyway, at the physics engine. We kind of concentrated on the hinge joint and built ourselves a trap door. Now we took a look at the three basic joints that are available with the, the Unity 3D physics engine, uh, but we really focused on the hinge joint and uh, I asked you guys to go through and build yourself something else besides a trap door. So hopefully you went through and practiced using it. Great! In this episode, well in the next few episodes anyway, what we're going to do is start taking a look at a really basic inventory system. Uh, and we're, we're not going to actually build ourselves like a graphical inventory system. What we are going to do is, is have a number of weapons that we're going to allow ourselves to switch into uh, based on a single keystroke. And we're going to add some animation to the GUI and that kind of thing to indicate our switch. Uh, this is going to take a, I think, at least two episodes. In the first one, we're going to take it really easy. In the first episode, this one, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at building an additional weapon and placing it properly in the character's hand. Uh, and once that's in place and everything is set up, we'll go through and we'll 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 build ourselves the the basic inventory manager on the character and allow us to switch between those two weapons. Uh, in today's episode, like I said, we're going to build ourselves a flamethrower. So we're going to build. So we'll have a machine gun and a flamethrower, and we'll see just how easy it is to build ourselves a new weapon with this kind of plug-and-play uh, system I've got set up. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, so we're keeping things simple in this first episode. All we're looking at is how quickly we can build a brand new weapon using simply the items that we've already created up until now. We've really We've really built some plug-and-play items here that are going to allow us to very quickly make any kind of weapon we want. We already have a fireball. If we take a look at our prefabs, we've already created a fireball projectile, and we're going to use that fireball projectile to make ourselves a flamethrower. But this technique that I'm going to show you right now could very easily be used to make a, a rocket launcher or any other kind of projectile weapon that you want to make, you know, a crossbow, anything you want to make. It's going to be completely up to you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and take a look in my models, first of all. Uh, and we've got ourselves in models. I've given you guys a flamethrower, and I'm just going to drag it and drop it on the on the screen for now. Uh, that's it. That's our flamethrower right there. Uh, it's a simple, simple model. All right. That's all it is. Is a graphic. Okay. And that's all our LMG was as well. Our LMG consisted of. We take a look, it's in our character's hands. The assault rifle, which was the top layer that we kind of used to place the, the weapon within the hierarchy of our character. Uh, and the LMG node, which was uh, which was uh, a little bit more information about the mesh and that kind of stuff. That's all it was. And underneath that was something called the gun muzzle. And the gun muzzle is really what defined how this weapon worked, all right? It's got everything about how fast it can fire, what it can fire, etc. Uh, and also all of our information about sounds and melee. Now we're gonna make some adjustments to this, this script in, in the next episode but for now it's going it's all we really need to br make ourselves a brand new weapon let's go into the flamethrower itself right now and let's resize it so I'm just gonna set this thing to zero let's just reset it so it's at the origin and I'm gonna set my scale to decimal zero one and decimal zero one and decimal zero one all right I know that's the size I need to make it it's modeled exactly the same as my LMG and uh, that's the size of my LMG from before so let me just focus on it and there it is all right so there is my resized weapon and that's great uh, Right now, it's, it's the way I like it. I'm not going to bother changing anything. The rotation of the actual weapon, so it's, it's looking the right way. Everything looks fine right here. I am not going to change anything. No, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. All right. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my prefabs now, and I'm going to find myself my gun muzzle. It's right here. And I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it on my flamethrower on the top layer. And what that does is it gives me all the information about this weapon. I'm going to change its name right away to, instead of gun muzzle, let's call it a flame muzzle, just so we don't get confused later on when we're actually going through and trying to make adjustments to one or the other. Um, it's got the fire bullet script, which is in charge of actually firing a projectile. So let's take a look at that right now. Right now, it will fire once every every 1 15th or, or 1.5, uh, 0.15 seconds. I don't want that. Uh, this thing's going to fire much slower. Let's have it fire once a second, let's say. Uh, the projectile, now this is what, the projectile itself defines how much damage and everything else it does. It takes care of all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to go to my prefabs, find my fireball, and drag it and drop it in there. So now my weapon is firing a, a fireball instead. My player ammo slider, well that's the same. I'm going to look down into my into my player canvas right here. I'm going to find my uh, I'm going to find my ammo slider, which is right here. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop that right in my ammo slider location. Perfect. 
The number of rounds that we can have, the maximum number. This is a flamethrower, it does damage every round. Let's give it only 10 rounds, all right? And starting rounds, let's give it the full 10. When you pick it up, you get the, full, the whole thing. Our sound, uh, let's go take a look in our audio. Uh, right here, flamethrower, this is what? Flamethrower flame, okay, so let's go into this. This is going to be our actual sound, so flame muzzle. Uh, our shooting sound is gonna be flamethrower. And our reload sound is gonna be this flamethrower reload then, perfect. All right, so right now this weapon's gonna shoot differently, it's gonna do different damage, it's gonna fire different projectiles, it's gonna do everything a little bit differently. Let's go into the melee as well. Let's make this thing here hit a lot harder. It's gonna do, I don't know, 25 damage. You know, it's a really heavy, strong weapon. Uh, the knockback radius will be the same, but we can only swing it once every second, so it's much slower to swing. So just, by doing those few little tiny things, we've created ourselves a brand new weapon. The flamethrower itself, I'm gonna go up to the top right now and I'm going to drag this into our prefabs so we've got ourselves a flamethrower. Bam, all right, there's our flamethrower. Now, I'm gonna grab this flamethrower and I'm gonna drag the entire thing down into my soldier's hands. Let's go down here into our, oops, I'm scrolling back and forth, into our right hand and we're gonna drop it off. It should appear just below the assault rifle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero this out first of all, so it's at zero, zero, zero. So it's in the proper location right now. All right, that looks pretty darn good. Uh, it's in the proper location as far as the hierarchy is concerned. I'm going to use the next layer down, the flame thrower layer, to ensure that this is in the proper location in the, in the player's grip. I'm just gonna turn off my assault rifle by clicking off this little check mark right here. Uh, to allow me to be able to see this and only this for now. So I'm just gonna drag this. Oops, I'm wrong level, wrong layer. It doesn't really matter to be honest which layer you pick. I just like to keep them separate. All right, I'm gonna drag it like that. I'm gonna drag it up a little bit. Drag it forward a little bit. Drag it this way a little bit. There, that's probably pretty good. You know what, I had not set up my flame muzzle yet. So let's go into our flame muzzle and make sure this is also located directly in front of our weapon so we are firing everything from the proper location. That looks pretty darn good. Uh, my projectile, let me just make sure that my flame projectile, I'm gonna make sure this is positioned at zero, zero, zero. For my flame project, oops, I was in the wrong thing. For my flame projectile, sorry, I'm gonna make sure this is at zero, 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 so I'm not uh, creating it somewhere where I'm not supposed to. Make sure my fireball is at zero, zero, zero. My smoke, good, everything like that's perfect. Now. Just by doing that, and I've turned off my assault rifle, so now the only thing that's active on here is my flamethrower. All of the things underneath this inactive, this is turned off, I turn it on, you can see it comes back. Everything that's inactive will no longer, will no longer be uh, used. So if I pull my trigger now, let me just hit play and show you. Boom. When I pull the trigger now, I'm going to get a fireball that comes pouring out instead. Let's go here, grab our health fire at this guy here. Our on fire script is still working. Our dude burns and he dies. Grab my health and let me fire a couple. Now, it's firing pretty quickly here. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and grab my ammo just to make sure my ammo is working. Boom, it does. Now, I don't know if that's the right sound. Uh, maybe it was, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what sound I chose. But anyway, guys, you can see how quickly we went through and created a brand new weapon. We didn't have to do anything else. All we had to do is turn off um, the weapon that was already in our hand. And by doing so, only the, the information on this one is taking place. If, for some reason, I had them both on, watch what happens. I'm going to turn the assault rifle on as well as the flamethrower. So right now, if I take a look inside here, uh, can't really see the, fl the, the well, we kinda can. Um, both weapons are turned on right now. So we've got ourselves a, a machine gun, a light machine gun and a flamethrower on at the same time. If I hit play right now and I pull the trigger, watch what happens. Let me, let me kill this guy really fast. Pull the trigger. I'm getting both weapons going off at exactly the same time, all right? And that's because both scripts are active. So the script that allows the flamethrower to work as well as the script that allows the actual uh, the actual bullet to fire. I'm not sure what's gonna happen here if I pick up this ammo. Let's see if I... I think it's only gonna give me ammo for the one, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure in this situation. Later on, we're gonna write code, guys, that is going to allow us to either have one weapon 
or the other one on. All right, so for now, I'm gonna make sure that I've applied this. So it's got all the information in my prefab. Everything is set up appropriately now. And for now, I'm just gonna turn off my flamethrower so we're back to our original assault rifle, okay? And that's it, guys. That's how fast you can make a brand new weapon. This same technique can be used to make yourself a rocket launcher or a crossbow or anything like that. Go in, add your, add your model, uh, add your new projectile that you wanted to the gun muzzle, like add your gun muzzle, then change the information about the projectile, and that's it. You've got yourself brand new weapons that quickly. This is really a plug and play kind of thing. That's how I've created it. Everything is based on the idea of the gun muzzle, and the gun muzzle creates a projectile that is an entirely separate prefab. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. We're going to call it off right there. I don't want to have this go on too long. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at the code to make the inventory itself switch back and forth. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below with a thumbs up and a comment if you did enjoy it, and if you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.